I'm going to share with you the 10 biggest and most common mistakes I see young motion designers make and that I made myself. Collecting plugins. Plugins are not going to solve your problem. When I was starting, I thought I needed Particular and Plexus and all the big plugins that were trending at the time. But the truth is I've never worked on a commercial project that needed them. Having more plugins won't make you a better animator. The more experience I get, the less I find I'm actually using plugins and tend to stick with ones that just improve workflow that are more a utility. Relying on templates. Templates definitely have a place for repetitive tasks and when a client has zero budget. But when I first learned that you could buy templates online, I thought, wow, these look great. They look so expensive. The client's gonna have no idea that we use these. But you're really shooting yourself in the foot because when changes and feedback inevitably come through, you're not gonna know how to change them. And more importantly, you don't improve your skills by using them. Using them once or twice can be fine, but don't develop a habit of it. You just won't see yourself developing the skills you need. Three, going straight into After Effects and ignoring design. When I first learned to animate, I was so keen to get into After Effects and just get things moving. It didn't matter what they looked like. So all my early animations were basic shapes and text because they're really easy to make in After Effects. But After Effects has really limited design tools Definitely it's worth your time to go into Photoshop or Illustrator, spend an hour, a day, whatever you can, designing something that looks good first. That way, when you get into After Effects, you don't need to think about how good it looks. That's already taken care of. You're just focusing on how to make it move good. A good design with basic animation can be really impressive, but a bad design with great animation really impresses no one. Number four, not keeping your project organized. This is essential, especially if you're working in teams. No one wants to work with someone who makes their work harder. Definitely keep your project window organized. You can download my template in the description for you to use yourself and definitely name and color code your layers and not just for other people using your file. It helps you keep track of where things are and maybe what comps have been approved or not. And don't just do this for other people that might come in and use your files. Keeping it organized will really help you know where everything is and maybe even what different shots have been approved or not. It only takes a couple of seconds while you're animating to label a layer. So just go ahead and do it. You're gonna save yourself so much time in the long run. And then in a couple of months time, when the client comes crawling back for you to update a logo or a single name, you know exactly where to look and you're not wasting your time trying to find everything. Quick sidebar, one thing that definitely isn't a mistake is giving this video a like and maybe considering subscribing if you'd like more of these every week. Number five, foregoing the fundamentals. I spend 90% of my time in After Effects animating the position, scale and rotation of layers and the shape path and mask as well a little bit. If I spent the time to get really good at animating those things when I first started, instead of trying to figure out every single effect that you could do in After Effects, I would have been in a much better place a lot quicker. It's great to know how to make photorealistic water in After Effects, and I definitely want people that are starting to follow their curiosity wherever it leads them. But you should spend some time as well focusing on what you're gonna be doing the majority of time the animating. Animating the transform properties are kind of like the squats, deadlift, and bench press of After Effects. And when I first started, I was doing a lot of this. Also look into the 12 principles of animation. I kind of dismissed them when I first heard about them because I thought I don't do Disney style 2D cell animation. That's not for me. I animate motion graphics, a modern art form, but I was wrong. Those are foundational skills that will definitely improve your work if you understand and apply them. Number six, being scared of the graph editor. I was really scared of the graph editor when I first started because it looked really complicated and plugins like Motion V2 and Ease and Wiz could get great looking easing with just one click. What they were actually doing was getting good enough looking easing with one click to get an animation curve that's really bespoke and really sets up the anticipation and get something really smooth and snappy that feels natural. You're gonna have to get in the graph editor. There's no other way about it. And I know there's a bit of a learning curve. It's hard to do at first but maybe take a week or two without using those plugins and you'll find that you can do anything in the graph editor a lot quicker and a lot easier. It's definitely daunting at first, but the payoff can be huge. Learning the graph editor was the single thing that improved my animation the most, without question. Graph editor sidebar, I definitely prefer the value graph editor to the speed graph editor, which I'd rarely ever use. And I always try to separate the X and Y position values where I can as well. That just makes it a whole lot easier in the graph editor. Number seven, repeating tutorials for everything. 
I knew when I first learned how to track text onto a wall or onto a hand, that's all I wanted to include in all of my animations. But try not to shoehorn the last thing you learned how to do into a client project, because often it's not gonna fit. It might look cool and I understand you wanna show off your new skills, but it might not be the best approach. Not everything has to have cinematic lighting and volumetric clouds and lightsabers or even looping textures and grain. Not every project needs those things. You should tailor your design specifically for the project. The design of a project should be focused on the needs of a client, not your most recently watched YouTube videos. Number eight, not making an animatic. An animatic or a boardomatic is where you've just got the stills and storyboards cut together to maybe a VO and some music just to get a sense of timing. And making one will save you so much time. Even if it takes you a morning or even the whole day, I know it feels like you're wasting time building an animatic when you could be spent animating the final thing, but your client is gonna have feedback on the timing. And making those timing changes to a bunch of stills in a timeline is way easier than opening up a comm with hundreds of layers and thousands of keyframes and going at it from there. It'll also show you where more design frames maybe need to be created or maybe a part of the animation is going too fast and you need to lose a scene or two. I make an animatic for all of my personal projects now because it just helps me get a better overview of the project as a whole. And it means I can make timing changes before I've committed too much time to animating the final piece. Number nine, only referencing are the motion design. If you're only pulling reference from motionographer and your favorite motion design studios on Instagram, it's gonna really limit how unique and expressive your own work can be. This is something I definitely still need to practice. Maybe look at opening up your influences to other industries like music or 19th century graphic design, fine art, photography, or SpongeBob title cards. Other things that can influence you besides just the hottest studios. Collecting from a wide range of sources and filtering it through your own unique ideas and techniques and perspectives is a better way to create more interesting work than just having an Instagram feed bleed straight into your eyes and then flood straight back out your fingers into After Effects to create work that looks like so many other people. I definitely think it's a good idea to be aware of what the best animation in the industry is looking like at the moment, but it just shouldn't be your only source of inspiration. And again, something I have to work on too. Number 10, not taking your time. Good animation takes time. Great animation takes even longer. And I didn't realize how long it took when I first started. Look at the credits of a cool animation you like from one of the studios you enjoy. It probably has dozens of animators and designers and they probably worked on it for at least a month or two. That's a lot of man hours that go into a project to make it look as good as some of the high level projects do. When you're starting out, and this was definitely the case for me, the client budgets and tight deadlines just didn't allow to make amazing animation, honestly. But that's what it takes. It takes time. Time to make mistakes and time to experiment and time to make the design the best solution, not just your first solution. So don't beat yourself up if your work as an individual isn't on the same level as a top tier design studio. Those aren't the same thing and it's not fair to compare them. One final bonus mistake. I know puppet pinning character animations can be really appealing when you first start because it's really easy, but Learn how to do it with shape layers. It will look better. Just trust me. If you want to learn a whole lot of practical After Effects techniques, I've made a short playlist that includes exactly that. Please like this video and consider subscribing if you'd like more of these videos every week. I'll see you in the next video.